right. How are, how are you, all of you? Good morning. All right. Uh, now we pass on to the next poem by Andrew Marvel. And uh, as you see, the title is On a Drop of Dew. All right. In contrast to his poem, which we did last time, that's uh, to his choir mistress, this one is what we call as devotional poetry. So these uh, two poems prescribed uh, for you by Marvel are reflective of these two main strands in metaphysical poetry. One is love poetry in the form of seduction poem or passion poem, which we did last time. And this one is highly meditative, devotional, confessional, religious meditation, like the stanza, like the sonnet, which we did for done. So I won't go, uh, I will just very quickly go, go through this. It is about <coughs> religious meditation, it's about confession, it is about God-man relationship, it is about the most important part, right, from theological point of view or religious point of view is, it is about the ascent and descent of the human soul. A drop of dew that triggers the imagination of the poet and he expresses his reflections which are articulated in the poem. This dew stands for the human soul or the human being who has descended from the heavens but the original home is the heavens. So the descent, the fall of man and then death signifying the ascent. So it is about the descent and ascent of the human soul. Now, just look at the significance of this dew. Dew drop, pure, fresh, new. That's what the soul is in its pristine purity. <clears throat> a drop of dew does not, should not mingle with other things. That's what man should do. That's what the human soul should, this is the model which it should follow. Maintain its purity. Right. The symbolism is very is striking in the poem, drop of dew early morning, it's there, it is on the leaf, on the grass without mingling and as soon as it comes into contact with the sun ray, it melts, vanishes, disappears. So the sun is standing for death. So the life of a drop of dew is very short, transient, transience of life that's another idea. But as long as the drop of dew is, is there, it should <coughs> not get itself corrupted, corroded by the corrupting forces. Very poignantly, he projects the drop of dew, the human soul, and now look at the text here. It is the drop of dew is pearl-like. See how the orient dew, orient in the sense of morning uh, in this direction of the sun, shed from the bosom of the morn in into the blowing roses, yet careless of its mansion. Careless in the sense of indifference. That's what the poet's message is. Worldliness should not enter into the human mind or human heart. Careless, careless in the sense of <clears throat> unconcerned, nothing to do with it. For the clear region where it was born, you should all the time remember its heavenly origin. Round in itself encloses. Man is self-sufficient. Yes, 
so it hardly needs anything here for the clear region where it was born round in itself and closes and in its little globes extent little globe that's what the microcosm is there frames as as it can its native element very significant expression that you element the heavenly origin the celestial <coughs> uh, uh, descent you should keep in mind how it purple flower does slide. It does not pay any attention to this colorful, pul purple, attractive, pleasing flowers around it. So the flowers standing for worldliness is scarce touching where it lies. Same attitude of carelessness. That's carelessness in the sense of indifference, uh, disregard. So is scarce hardly touching where it lies nothing to do with its surrounding and here is the most important part of the poem but gazing back upon the skies all the time connected with the heavens god consciousness a spiritual link with the creator that should be maintained very robust relationship shines with a mournful light well as far as on the light is there it is mournful mournful is also very significant in the sense of lamenting its fall lamenting its <coughs> its descent from the heavens like its own tear simile within simile the human soul like a drop of dew and drop of dew like a tear all this signifying its departure from the heavens because so long divided from this sphere the reason for lamentation is it is away from its home restless it rolls and unsecure at one level it is common sense common knowledge that uh, the drop of dew is rolling on the grass so restless and insecure trembling lest it grow impure this restlessness is linked with god consciousness with the spiritual strength till the warm sun pity its pain this pain moan lamentation that's over as soon as the sun rises in the sky and it vanishes and to the skies exhale it back again that's the ascent it started with the descent now the ascent inhale and exhale it's going back so the soul that drop that ray of the clear fountain of eternal day. Now the simile is complete. That drop of dew is, like, is the soul, that drop is that ray which goes back to its eternal day, shuns the sweet leaves and blossoms green. Right. It might remind you of <coughs> Frost's poem The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, so the leaves are sweet. The blossoms are green, but it shuns, shuns, abstains, issues, and recollecting its own light, its own spiritual light, its own celestial origin that should be the source of its strength, does in its pure and circling thoughts express the greater heaven in an heavenless. Ah, look at the microcosm and the macrocosm, the, the drop of dew is a microcosm, microcosm in itself in how quiet a figure wound, wind and wound, it is wrapped up in a quiet figure, every way it turns away to the word excluding round, it, exclusion, the note of exclusion should mark the behavior of a true believer, nothing not to get involved, yet receiving it in the day, it should pass life, it should spend its time here, here disdaining there in love, but it, the attitude should be of dark beneath but bright above. Uh, there is he should realize that there is darkness around. He himself is the source of light. Here disdaining there in love, the attitude should be of disdain, contempt. How loose and easy hence to go. Death is not something hard. It is so easy to lose the connection and to go how good and ready to ascend, ever ready to unite with the Creator, to go back to its home. 
moving but on the point below it all about does upwards bend all the time its attention its concern is the heavens such did the manna's sacred dew distill and now the biblical allusion manna and the dew in the bible the heavenly food white and entire that's the significant thing white standing for purity and entire that's perfection self-sufficiency though congealed and chill it might look cold but congealed on earth but does dissolving run into the glories of the almighty's sun it does not blossom here but as soon as it comes into contact with the with the sun it goes it returns to the glories of the almighty sun that's the heaven so that's return journey back home that's what <coughs> the poem is about it is about the ascent and descent of the rather descent and ascent return of the human soul and by maintaining its purity by avoiding this worldliness the idea is throughout the poem is of this worldliness shunning this worldliness and being aware conscious attentive concerned about that word about the creator about the original home so that's what as i said at the beginning of the presentation it is about meditation serious thoughts reflections about human existence relationship with god so as as you can see representative of this devotional poetry okay thank you very much